how should I be sizing my brass? Or how do the different methods of brass sizing work and are they really that much different from one another? These are the questions that I hope to answer for you in today's video. My standard recommendation is a full length size bumping the shoulder back 2000s. This is a good place to start. But if you'd really like to see the differences between these 12 different methods of sizing brass, today we're going to be looking at the seating force measurements and profiles generated by our amp press, along with the case volume differences between all these different methods. So let's get started. Option one is my first generic recommendation, a standard full length sizing die. And again, all of our sizing dies today, if they're bumping the shoulder at all, will be bumping 2000s. This method of sizing sizes the case on the brass on all sides. It typically oversizes the neck of the case and then an expander is drawn up through the neck to set the final neck dimension. These charts show the force applied by the press during the seating process. These charts show distance in inches on the X axis as well as force in pounds on the Y axis. This chart, as all the other ones will be today, are average of 10 separate cases, all seated with 142 grain match kings in a kneeled 6.5 Creedmoor once fired Lapo large rifle primer brass. In the end, I'll be putting all these charts on the same plot so you can compare them easier. But as you can imagine, we're gonna go through these individually because with 12 different samples, the chart will get a little cluttered. We can see in our first force chart here, as the projectile starts getting seated, that our force goes somewhere to ballpark of 30 pounds, comes down a little bit, and then finishes out just under 100 pounds. Now keep in mind at this point, we're not figuring out which one is better or worse. We're just going to create a baseline to compare everything else to. The second method we're going to be going over is very similar to the first step. We're gonna be using the same die, except removing the expander ball, and we're gonna be setting the final neck dimension with an expander mandrel that's 2 thousandths under projectile diameter. The biggest advantage to this process is typically better concentricity compared to the first method. This method is still going to be having the neck of the case shrunk down excessively. In particular, this neck is gonna be shrank down to around 285 thousandths. And after the expander mandrel is brought back through it, it's gonna be somewhere around 290 thousandths. This force curve is gonna look very similar. It might have a slight bit more overall force used because we can see that it ends up somewhere around 100 pounds, but overall the profile is very similar. Again, the biggest advantage to this method is additional concentricity as compared to bringing the expander ball back up through the neck of the die. The next option is very similar as it is also a full length sizing die, but it's going to be reducing the fatigue on the case neck by allowing the use of a bushing. The dimension of the bushing will be determining the outside neck dimension that the case is set down to, and this is user selectable. The easiest way to determine the proper size of this bushing is to measure the neck after the projectile has been seated. In our case, this measurement is 292 thousandths. So our bushing size for this will be 290 thousandths. We can see on this chart as the projectile starts to seat, the initial seating force is somewhere around 15 pounds, comes down a little bit, and then increases, and eventually it's going to hit all the way around somewhere around 85 pounds. So less neck tension than our other full size option. Clearly the biggest advantage to this option is having less work performed on the neck of the case. And this can be customized in one thousandths increments typically. In addition, these bushings won't size the whole neck and this typically should help reduce any issues that you could possibly have with donuts building up around the case neck shoulder junction of your cases. Possible negatives that I feel are worth mentioning is this particular option usually has slightly reduced concentricity, at least using the standard reading bushings. However, lately I've been using these newer bushings from Short Action Customs, and they have essentially eliminated any of the concentricity issues that I've been having with my standard bushings. If you're thinking of going with this configuration, I wouldn't hesitate to give Short Action Customs bushings a try. Another concern some people will bring up, if there's a large variation in the thickness of your necks, this can cause uneven pressures on your projectile. So how do we solve this? With our next method. Option four is essentially the same as our last. It's the same die, except we're going to be reducing our bushing size to 289, and then we're gonna be running a 262 expander mandrel to smooth out any of the out of roundness conditions that could be in our neck. We can see with this particular method that the seating force is slightly increased. Our initial seating pressure is ballpark of around 20 pounds, with our final seating force ending up somewhere around 90 pounds of pressure. This particular method will still be subject to the concentricity issues that I mentioned before. But again, if you're gonna try this method, look at the bushings from Short Action Customs. I've been impressed. Option five, we're going to start neck sizing. Now, before somebody loses their mind about neck sizing, I'm really not recommending this option, but it's an option that exists, so we should address it and at least take a look. The option five here is the Reading S die, except it's a neck only bushing die. It's only going to be sizing the neck back down to the same size we used for our last two configurations. 
So for option 5, we're going back to our 290 bushing and our neck only die. We can see a similar profile as before, as our initial seating pressure is somewhere around 15 pounds, going up a little bit, but our big difference here is we can see, just as the projectile is starting to finish seating, that the bushing has not sized all of the neck. Once the projectile has passed the part of the neck that hasn't been seated, the seating force starts to decrease a little bit at the end. So our peak force applied will be slightly less, but again, very similar profile to the full length die. The pro of our neck sizing options is that they're going to have a tighter fit case to your chamber. However, the more cycles that are fired, the harder running the action is going to be. It's likely this is a sacrifice not worth making. While most people these days are never recommending to neck size, if you were going to look at this option, realize it's also for bolt actions only. And because we want as much of an apples to apples comparison as possible, option six is gonna be the same as before, again, a neck only size with a 289 bushing with a 262 expander mandrel. Looking at our force seating graph again, we can see that this method has increased our initial seating force to around 20, looks very similar to our previous one, but has the same neck sizing only option where we can see before our projectile is completely seated that we've exceeded the size portion of the case, but our peak seating force is slightly higher than our 290 bushing, but it's very close. And hopefully that expander mandrel has evened out all those necks to give us the best performance possible. For option seven, we're gonna be using the Lee Collet die in its standard configuration. This is another neck only die, similar, except instead of using a bushing, it's using a collet to smash the brass around a fixed rod. Unless you plan on modifying your pin or your flash holes, it's going to restrict you the usage of brass that does not have a 59 thousandths flash hole, such as a Lapua Palma Pocket. This is large rifle primer brass, so we're not going to be having any issues. And frankly, most brass won't. Some people swear by this method for added concentricity, but let's look at the force profile. We can see on this chart that we're gonna have that initial seating pressure a little bit over 20, dips down a little under 20, and our final seating force is gonna be all the way around 50 pounds, so much less than our other options so far. So what if we wanted to increase a little bit? There is another option for this specific die, and that's an undersized die. Lee offers an undersized mandrel for this particular option that measures 260 thousandths on that internal rod. So what does that profile look like? We can see that it's gonna increase our force, still gonna be not too far over 20, but it's not gonna dip down below it. And our final seating force for this option is gonna be just over 70 pounds of force. So if you want a little more neck tension, that is certainly an option. As with any of the other neck only options, you're eventually going to be full length sizing it to be able to get it to chamber. Option number nine of what we're gonna end up testing is essentially the same as item three. I'll throw the chart on there so you can see it if you want for the average of these 10 samples. However, it's gonna be essentially item three, except we're gonna be using a crimp on it. Adding a consistent crimp is a comment I hear relatively frequently on my channel. It's not part of my process, but out of fairness to this study, we're going to be giving it a try. But it's gonna be applied after the seating force, so you're not gonna be able to see it on this chart, unfortunately. Our 10th option is by far the most expensive die in our test. This is a full length die from Short Action Customs. This die is so nicely made, it's hard to believe. It's a full length die similar to option three. However, this die, instead of having just a neck bushing, the bushing sizes both the neck and the shoulder at the same time. This bushing is gonna be held in the die body so tightly, it's probably gonna be giving us the most concentric option possible, no matter what die we're talking about here. But don't get me wrong, it's certainly not a cheap die. Looking at the chart, we can see we picked the 289 bushing. Why didn't we pick the 290? Well, as with the short action custom bushings, because of the unique profile that they have, you get a slightly lower overall neck tension given the same dimension. We can see even though this is a full length die, we have our initial seating force starting just over 15, ramps up relatively smoothly, and we can see right around 60 pounds there is where we hit our peak force. And then even though a full length die, it's not sizing the whole neck of the case, so we're gonna have the same benefits of not having issues with donut buildup and not seeing any erratic readings in our seating force. For our option 11, here's a hybrid method that I've heard suggested many times on the channel. This is using the Redding full length sizing die with no bushing. And this is essentially gonna provide a shoulder bump and then using the Lee Collet die to size the neck. Clearly the people looking at this are hoping for the additional concentricity benefit that the collet die may provide. But since our neck tension is going to be provided by the die, we're going to have a similar profile to what we saw before. Looking at our profile, we can see that the initial seating force starts basically right on that 20 mark, comes down a little bit, and finishes out just below 50. 
Option 12 was a last minute entry. I've been wanting the Forrester bushing bump die to test, but it's been out of stock for months. I got the in-stock notification for this when I was loading all of the rest, ordered it in, and so it will be sneaking on as our last minute entry into our test. This kit has three different bushings, but we're going to be using the 290 bushing to mimic everything else as much as possible. This die is unique because it doesn't size the outside body of the case, but it does provide a shoulder bump for slightly better chambering. I can only assume that at some point you're going to need to full size it, but until I test it, I really don't know. This particular die with the 290 bushing is going to provide one of the most interesting seating charts of all, at least in my opinion. The average force chart for this, we're starting, there's a slight bump right around that 10 pound mark, but it's almost a straight line all the way up to 75 pounds of total seating force. Not sure that's good or bad, but an interesting chart for sure. Now we're about to talk case volume differences between all these methods, but I promise you the chart. This is the chart that has all the different options on it. If you'd like to compare, pause it, look at it to your heart's content, but we're going to move on and talk about the differences in case volume. Now, to some of you, it may be a surprise and some of them not. The full length sizing die is going to decrease our internal case capacity slightly on our size brass because it's sizing the brass. It's going to make it smaller. So how much is it? Well, out of all of our options, the short action customs die with the 29 bushing is going to give us the smallest internal case volume of 51.03 grains on average. I did notice with this die, it sizes the base of the case down just a little bit more. And that's why it's giving us the lowest volume. Our highest volume on the opposite end is clearly one of the neck only options. The Reading S die with the 2A9 bushing give us an average of 51.51 grains of water. All of our full length sizing options will be highlighted in green for the average options, whereas the neck only options will be in red. One caveat to this chart is I didn't get the opportunity with the Forrester bushing bump die to get those internal volume measurements, but I will update them at a later date. While these slight case volume differences may seem insignificant, it's going to make a difference when we see our pressure and velocity response, which will be in next week's video. Or you might be able to find it right here if it's already been released. But if you'd like to see how differences in neck tension can affect the performance of your reloads, check out this video right here, and I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.